And with and with that being said about the whole Kevin Hart thing, I just feel like, yeah, they went to Twitter and, and Kevin Hart said what he said. And he, he had a couple of low blows in there, what have you. But I feel like there is jealousy. And I feel like that that Mike Epps did go after him in a, in a way that was not necessarily, it didn't need to happen. And like, I don't know, maybe you, you said before, maybe there was some offline stuff that didn't make it to social media that we don't know exactly. happened. But I know for my money. You give me a hundred dollars and you say I can buy a ticket for Mike Epps or Kevin Hart. I'm I'm going to see Kevin Hart. I'm going to see Kevin Hart. All right. So how you feel about it, mate? I just feel as well. Um, I think that Mike Epps should have kept his comments to himself. Mm -hmm. I think you should approve what you were saying about Kevin Hart by putting in the work. Okay. By going out there and doing it. Right. And saying, you know, yes, I stepped back for a while, I took my hi hiatus or however you want to spend it. Right. But now I'm back. And you saw us selling out coliseums and stadiums and things like that, as opposed to taking what I view to be the bitch move. Which is some bitch shit, right? And getting on social media like you're some 15-year-old high schooler. Right, right. And talking about Kevin Hart's shoes or you don't like his hair. You know, just, just a pain Right, right, it. right. You should have just came up and let your work speak for itself. And so again, start out, start by selling out the same type of venues that um, Kevin Hart sold. Right, he sold out Madison Square, Madison Square Garden in like 10 minutes. Like, do that, impress me. Impress me. And my thing is, I know... Um, I was looking at a show on Oprah. Oprah did a show with black actresses. And I know one of the things they talked about was how, because Hollywood only, um, it's like you're the golden girl for the moment or right. whatever. They do pit the black actresses against each other. And I'm thinking maybe, and, and, and Gabrielle Union has been very candid in saying that she was a mean girl that was pretty much a do whatever she had to do to get the part kind of person. And she did feel personally, uh, it was a personal thing when somebody got a part over her. So I say that to say maybe Mike Epps feels like Kevin Hart's taking all the roles. He's being greedy. He's taking all the roles and he's overrated and he's this and he's that. You know, one of the comments he made on Twitter was that he sold out to Hollywood and he this and he that. So, I mean, I don't know. Do you feel like it's some validity in that? But what are we going to stop a lot? And I get it. I understand what Gabriel Yoon is saying. There's small black, there's small parts or not enough parts for all the black actors and actresses we have to go around. Mm -hmm. But when are we going to start letting, quote unquote, the man control our emotions and our thought process? Mm -hmm. Um... We should be we should be at a point in our and I say we as a black community as a people of color community we should be at a point where we celebrate each other right when we're happy no I didn't get the role but I'm glad that it went to Gabrielle Union that it went to me alone as opposed to say someone mm -hmm. it could have been went to a non person of color right and once again we're wiped off the media map where I mean because in all honesty. If you look at if you if I was someone from another country and saw American TV, I would think that people of color only contribute to the news as far as criminals and things like that. Right. And then once in a while you have these entertainment beats like with Mike Epps and with Kevin Hart where they're going at each other. Right. And it's and it's amusing to certain people, but it in my it's it's embarrassing to a certain point. Yes. Marlon Wayans even tweeted and he said it in a funny way, but basically he was like, Stop. Right. You know, he was like, Stop doing that, y'all. Um so part two of um, our, our, our man bitch beef this week, <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> uh, we have Floyd Mayweather and we have Nelly. Now Floyd Mayweather just had a fight last night and he won. He's still undefeated and all that great stuff. And, you know, of course he had Jace, Justin Bieber and Lil Wayne walk him into the ring. He and had Justin Bieber. I, I, haven't seen, I, I don't, I'm not a boxing fan. So I like boxing. That's he not. had Justin. Justin, the Biebs was with him. The Biebs was last, hanging out. The last fight I... Actively watched was when Mike Tyson bit My, off Holyfield's stop. ear. Stop! Okay. You cannot contribute mm -hmm. to the boxing conversation. If, if Sugar Ray Leonard come up missing, don't come looking. Sugar, <laughs> Ooh, you didn't take it back to Sugar D, Maryland's own Sugar Ray. Yes, yes, it is. Mel, but bring it back. Bring, it, bring back. it back. Bring it back. <laughs> With that being said, yes. <laughs> I'm <Now> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. With that being said. Um, Friday, I'm riding home and I'm on my Instagram, not driving and looking on my phone, but anyway, looking at my Instagram and Floyd Mayweather puts up, you know, catch me on V106 and my interview with Big Tigger for the real story. I'm like, oh, right. real story. Cause you know, people have been following him and his ex fiance have been back and forth on Twitter and been some accusations about infidelity and gold digging and abortions and just been a lot of, a lot of shit out there. So me being a nosy person that I am, I said, okay. So I tune in to, to the, to the big ticket show and I'm listening to the interview. So at one point in the interview, Tigger asked him about the, um, the situation with his, um, fiance and he says, um, 
well, you know, that's private and I want to keep it private. And Tinker was like, but you've been putting it all on the internet. Like, you've been putting your business out there. So, how private could it really be if he you've wants been... Privacy when it's convenient for him. Right, right. And and then a lot of people, a lot of celebrities I feel do that. When it's private, when it's convenient for them, then it's private and they want their privacy. But in the, but in the meantime and in the real reality of it, you know, once you put stuff out there, people are going to keep, keep jumping on it. So... He, but then he proceeded to talk about it for thirty minutes. So I think, I think he really just wanted people to ask, and he was trying to sound real humble. And well, you know, he was talking all low like that, and you know, Tigger, you know, I, I really loved her, and you know, I, I, I didn't, you know, like playing the victim, and she was a gold digger, and. But if you loved her, if you really loved her at any point in time, you wouldn't be on the radio or on any type of social media slamming her. Exactly. So, and you know, I had to look, you know, I was looking at my phone going, really, bitch? Because <laughs> you sound like a bitch right now. So in the process of that, he, he proceeds to throw Nelly under the bus, rapper Nelly. And he, he throws these little slots, you know, these little side jabs at him, talking about, he kept talking about how he really liked country grammar. Like, that's the only fucking song that Nelly has ever come out with. Nelly didn't have 20 albums after country grammar. He's done movies and TV shows, and he's done other stuff. And you just keep, yeah, because, you know, I really did like country <laughs> grammar back in the day. Uh, back in the day, but back he, in the day. Floyd was the man that he, he, for, he, um... I don't want to say proceed, but the man that he presents himself mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. Why would you? Why would you bring Nelly into an argument or beef between you and your former? And Nelly, husband? right? Because Nelly had nothing to do with it. So supposedly, what he said was that not supposedly. What I heard him say was that Nelly's ex girlfriend, not Ashanti, but another chick that he dated, is friends with Miss Jackson, who is um, Floyd Mayweather's fiance. fiance. And supposedly, Nelly's broke, and Ashanti loaned him all this money, and Nelly's this and that. So he puts all that out there, and then he, because um, Nelly was sitting courtside at one of the games with Miss Jackson, and he was like, you know, I mean, me and you not together anymore and everything, and that's cool, but, I mean, I'm just saying the way people are perceiving you, they're going to perceive you like a hoe, because you jump from me to the next man so quickly, and I don't have no problem with Nelly, I'm just saying, it's just not a good look. And so again, you, <laughs> again, you say... Really, bitch? Really. You know, because you throwing him under the bus. You are making your little side comments. You're making it seem like you don't have any money. You're making it seem like, you know, that um, he ain't had no hits. That he's just some little bum, one-hit wonder. And he's being passive-aggressive behind it. You didn't say it in Nelly's face. No, certainly not. You said it on the radio. And then you're still going to say it in a passive-aggressive way. Well, I mean, you just jump for the next man. And I heard, I heard, you sound like a... Freaking nine-year-old girl who's telling schoolyard tales about what you heard and what somebody said. Mm, he say said, for, she said. Right. Say for sake of argument, Ashante did give Nelly money. If that was her man, if that was her friend, and that was just what she chose to do with her money, that's her Ashante. Money. Why are you dragging Ashante in? It sounds like Floyd has taken one too many hits to the head. <laughs> he ducking the fight with Pacquiao. So he trying to pick one with Nelly. Mm -hmm. Because let's be real. In the total toe fight, Nelly may... I'm not sleeping on my husband. Nelly may not be able to beat Floyd in a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight, but don't mean he can't have your ass shot. Yeah, because he, yeah. He, so, he, Floyd, he, let's, yeah. Let's, let's, let's be real Let's be clear. This. Let's remember who he is and where he come from. He's from the Dirty South. So he know not, people. He know people. Let's not sleep on that. Let's not sleep. Yeah, so, it was just a, it was a week of beefs, and it was a week of bitch beefs, men bitch beefs. That, both of those were on Friday. Both of those things happened on Friday, and I was like, damn, what is going on with the men? This is some real. What happened to Friday night? Just got paid. You Why? Like you know, like what? Why are we beefing? And I mean, like I said, I can I can respect Kevin Hart from the point of view that he said what he said and he put it out there, and then he was done. He was Mike done with it. To get a life, find a life, buy a life, and be born <laughs> with his damn life. Stop counting um, Kevin Hart's chickens. Stop, Stop counting my money. Right. If you want his money, follow his success. Find his grind. Do what he did, and then you worry about it. Right. As opposed to being a total bitch, which is what you've been. Been a real, really bitch. A big bitch. And sitting here worrying about how this man got his money, because at one point in time you were at a plateau where you were admired, and people you would have sought out comedian for whatever reason you lost your podium. Don't get mad and because he picked it up, dusted off, and stepped on. But isn't that what it always is? It's always the next person. It's always somebody else. I mean, I mean, really, we. we what you want to do is establish yourself as a legend or a go-to so that people right. will come back to you. But the reality is when you reach that, that, 
that that mecca, that climax, right. there's only a certain amount of time you're going to stay there before the next person comes and knocks you off that throne. You look at people like Richard Pryor and, and Bill Cosby or you look at the Red, uh, Red Fox, they weren't always at the at the plateau. Right. However, they established themselves to the point where they remain legends. And that's what you should be striving to do. And you're not going to become a legend by knocking down the next person. And let's be real, if Martin was to stand up or get on Twitter or get on Instagram or whatever and say, well, I don't know why my age Epps jumping on Kevin Hart because my guests follow my footsteps. Right. Then you'd so, be mad. Then you'd be on some motion. So, you'd be a salty bitch then. <laughs> you'd be a salty bitch. You'd exactly. Be a salty bitch. So because that's what, yeah. The point of the, the lesson of today, my guests, let's keep our words to ourselves. <laughs> let's spend our time and energy trying to make money as opposed to trying to defeat someone else while they're making money. Mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. really, bitch, you ain't had a good movie. Since you was barely in Hangover 3. Right. Let's go there. Let's, Let's go there. Honest. I mean, and granted, Kevin Hart hasn't had a string of big blockbusters movies, but he's constantly working. He's constantly has his name out there. He's constantly doing something. He's constantly And he's his on brand. his grind. Like, he yes. is on... I, I Like I said, I respect the hell out of his grind. If you follow him on Instagram, Twitter, he's always on his grind. Like... He's always going to the next project. And when it's not a project that he creates it. Like, look at Real Husbands of Hollywood. Right. That was a brainchild that he created. And and he, and I, what I respect is, even once he blew up, he stuck with it. He didn't right. leave those people high and dry and say, I'm too big to do this shit now. Because let's be real, he really is kind of too big to do that. Right. But he didn't do that. He they doing another season. He kept it going. You and know? then he's bringing in, he bought him, bought him Bobby Brown. But you know, that, he, he bought him Bobby my baby Brown. Bobby. He bought him baby. King of Pop or soul. The, the, king, the king of hip hop. Okay. Come king, king R&B. King R&B. It was the king R&B. That's what Whitney said. What? That's what he Whitney kept, said. He kept it going. And again, for Mike Epps to come out on Twitter and speak ill against Kevin Hart and his talent and what he's doing speaks more to the level that Mike Epps is on in a sense of being petty, jealous, and spiteful as opposed to deterring people from seeing Kevin Hart. Mm-hmm. Because again, like you just said, Kevin Hart is always on his grind. Always. He's always on a plane in some city going somewhere. Doing something. Else. And Mike F sitting at home, his grandmama bases with over slippers on, <laughs> on Twitter, with smoking Empire. his medicinal. Right, with he probably was high because half of the tweets you can't even barely understand. And now, yeah, you, yeah, they're, they're incoherent. Not, uh, yes, I can't even read them because I can't understand. I mean, like you know, you can't understand them. So you need to have, you need to take your money, stop buying weed, get your grandma coach, <laughs> get your English teacher, somebody to sit here and help you. To make your tweets a little bit more understandable, Mike. Let's be real about It's only this. 140 characters. I'm going to need you to really be able to do well, that. Well, how about he like we did when we was in school? You hand write out what you're going to say first. And, and then, then you type it in to make sure it makes sense. A rough draft. A, create a rough draft. Yeah. A create a rough draft. There because you go. really, bitch, Mike, come on now. Stop it. Stop it. So we're gonna end this week on um, Game of Thrones. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Mink the opportunity to to be happy about what did we find out last week? Ding Mink? dong, Joffrey said. Joffrey said, and yes, there is a dance that goes with it. She's dancing. Ding dong, Joffrey said. She's doing the whole Joffrey Debbie Joffrey Allen Joffrey fame Joffrey. choreographed dance right now. And please don't get me wrong, I'm not celebrating that a 15 year old boy was poisoned. You are. I'm, okay, well, small part. But I'm celebrating that this childish tyrant of a king who was a monster to his, his, his twin parents created. <laughs> right, they did. And some of, I, mean, I think his death should be a little more torturous. I was expecting. It was anticlimactic for me. I needed him I was, tortured. Yeah, I wanted I his mean, head granted, cut off. He looked, I wanted like his... somebody, he looked like somebody from The Walking Dead when he died. Yeah, it was bad. But I was expecting for him to be tortured for probably about 48 hours. Maybe dragged by a few horses. And ultimately, have his head put on a stake facing Ned Stark's head. Right, right. I need, I need for it to come full circle for him mm-hmm. because of all the wrong that he did. Because I, he went on like a bitch. He did. He did a little scratch on his throat and whatever. Uh, okay. But okay. did he call for his mama? Did you see him calling Look, for his mommy? Mommy! Mommy! Really? Really, bitch? Bitch, right. Okay. Little bitch. So, I was loving the fact that Grandma did it. Grandma, I'm, grandma. I'm, I'm a little afraid too because Grandma is the silent assassin. I think they're gonna get her though, but I'm scared. Because eventually, I think they're gonna find out she did it. Yes, yes. Um, but because I was, like I said, I was 
waiting for something because she let her granddaughter marry this dude knowing how diabolical he was. I felt like it was more coming. I felt like she wasn't going to quite let that go because she was too smart. Even from the beginning, she was she let you know how smart she was. We, even when they were planning the wedding, how much she was going to pay for. Like, all of that. And and, and so we're starting to see that now. We're starting to see that now. I, I thought grandma was going to let the wedding get, let the marriage get consummated. To make it official, so granddaughter could officially be queen. Because you remember that at the beginning they were talking, true. and she said, "Well, well, where am I? Am I queen?" Her grandma said, "You're not as much as a you're more queen than you were when she married the first guy, but you're not as much queen as you like to be. But now is not the right time to bring it up." And I think, I think she might have been worried about letting them have a wedding night. Mm-hmm. Because he's so he was so torturous. I mean, again, if you watch the show, you know what we're talking about. You saw the way he treated the prostitutes. You right. saw what he never wanted to have sex with them. He just right. wanted to torture them right. and beat them. And I'm thinking Grandma knew about that, that she knew she knew her granddaughter would have been in a better position had the marriage been consummated. However, that risk, I'm thinking she wasn't willing to take the risk of what would have happened. This is what I, this is my, as, as I was watching the show, this is my mind. Went, went. I need to go back and look at that episode again, though, because I think it's a lot of stuff we missed. See, watching the show, as, as, as I was watching the show, this is my mind was going. I knew something was going to happen to Joffrey, but I thought it was going to be Joffrey gets poisoned, but he, he, he has to leave the ceremony, the reception early because he's not feeling well. The poison is a slow poison. It's starting to take place. Mm-hmm. And you know how they do the carry them to the bed and the people mm-hmm. watch them mm-hmm. consummate. I think that part was going to take place. But then even later on that night or early that morning when the queen was out amongst her people, she, she likes to touch the poor people. Right. So while she's out with the alibi doing something, the Joffrey with the poison will really kick in and then he was going to go out then. Okay. So that way she's going to be a little more, right, okay. She's officially queen. Everyone witnesses. She has an alibi she didn't do and move on from there. Now, that's what I thought as I was watching it. Now, my hope, again, was he got dragged through the town by a horse. He was kind of beaten and, you know, I like the shit pie that he got hit with a couple episodes ago. That was great. If he got dragged through the town by a horse and the people got to beat on him as he went along, I'd have been cool with that. Right. right. But I was expecting for, the because I know that Joffrey's mother does not like his bride. Right. I wanted the bride to be in a position where she could strongly challenge the mother. True. And her being a official kiss her ass. Right. Yes. Would have worked solely for that purpose but right everything has a plan so we'll see from here yeah and, and, and that's definitely the case there i know that they better free Tyrion because he ain't do it and that's my man i know y'all better stop fucking with Tyrion. Yeah. i got my like i said I, I'm, I got my t-shirts coming my free Tyrion t-shirts i put it on my instagram my facebook i got it coming it's on my twitter too free Tyrion. Yes. okay I, for some reason i got a feeling i think jamie's going to suffer some type of wrath be it death or not I think Jamie is going to stay on the side of his brother, especially since his lover slash sister slash twin has turned her back on him. And so has the father. Father, yes. like you, you're you're you, you're a cripple. You're, you're no good to me anymore. And I think he and now and he now understands Jamie's a little bit about see, Tyrion a little he's bit. Going to see how Tyrion's been treated his whole life. Right. So I think he's going to stand by his brother. He might lose his life, or he might lose some things behind it. But I think he's going to stand up for his brother. And maybe how Tyrion gets out, Jamie steps in for him. He may. It's gonna be interesting. So next week we will come back. We're gonna do our um we're gonna do the Grey's Anatomy review with the return of Isaiah Washington and see her way, hey. And see 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 how um Minkin Anonymous felt about that. I don't watch Grey's Anatomy, so I have Meredith needs a life, but Oh right. Um <laughs> I wanna give a special shout out to Spike Fish Radio. Spike Fish Radio <laughs> Exactly. And we will catch you guys next week. And remember if you see anything crazy, hear anything stupid, squint your eye, turn your head and say, really, bitch? <laughs> and with that, we're out.